Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you are new to Pilates Reformer, you will wanna start with these exercises that I'm about to do right here, right now. So let's get started. We're gonna flip around, face the foot bar, and you're gonna load your springs on. So I have about four springs on. If you wanna take it to three, that'll work also. We're gonna start with footwork. So lying down onto your carriage, head will go into your headrest. Foot bar is in an upright position. Arms are long down by your side. You just wanna get comfortable onto your carriage here. Make sure you're not crunching up into those shoulder blocks too much. And I'm gonna start with the arches on. So I'm in parallel, about hip distance apart, taking that deep inhale to prep, and then you're gonna press out onto your foot bar as if you're standing up, and then sitting back down. But you're doing it lying down onto your reformer. So same movement here, just really pushing, finding that deep breath every time, and gliding that carriage right back in with control. So footwork just warms up the body. I like to feel like it's me arriving to my workout. It's a great warm up to start with, especially in the beginning of your Pilates practice. Just starting to feel how the carriage is underneath the body and how you respond to it. Deep breath, pushing evenly into those arches, making sure your tailbone is down and you're in your neutral spine. So the natural curve in which your spine is already in, just lying down, relaxing. Deep breaths as you press. And usually I'm here for about 10 to 12 reps. So we'll go for about five more in this position. Four, three, here for two, last one. Bring it right back in towards that stopper. And then we're gonna take the heels on now. So heels are on my foot bar, make sure you're nice and connected there. Adjust if you need to. Now squeeze the triceps down into the mat. That's gonna open up that chest and really fire up the posterior chain, all of the muscles in your back. Take that deep inhale again to prep and then you're gonna press out nice and strong. Fully extend onto that carriage. Right back in to glide. So as I press out, I'm making sure I'm not overextending in the knees and locking them out. So there's a difference between fully extending out onto your carriage and then locking the knees out. Try to maintain a slight micro bend that's to protect the joint and keeping it into the muscle of the legs. <sighs> nice and controlled. <sighs> As you get comfortable, you can start to speed it up a little bit, <sighs> but you're still in control of those springs. So not lining them just Fling you in and out. We'll go for six, five, four, three. Deep breaths again. Two. Always check in with that breath. Last one. Bring it right back in. And we're gonna take the feet wide now. So heels are gonna stay on, just different feet positions. We'll fire up different parts of the muscles. Slight external rotation. So opening up the hips just a little bit more here. You're in almost in that wide squat or sumo squat. Deep inhale again and press out. You're gonna start to feel those quads fire up. Squeeze those glutes beneath you. Sitting low in that chair. Deep press. Abdominals are nice and engaged. You can use the breath to really start to feel those ribs knit together. And notice how I'm not slamming into my stopper. I'm stopping right before and then press. So as an example, you come in, slam. Try not to let that happen. Right before, press. Seven, six, five, Four, three, stay wide in that chest, open up, two, and one, bring it in. 
Legs are nice and warmed up. We have one more foot position here. We're gonna take those toes on now. So back to parallel, wrapping those toes around the foot bar, almost like a bird on a perch, okay? So if you create that in your mind, you can see, wrap them around. All 10 toes are on, and I'm gonna pop my heels up as if I'm putting on a high heel. So instead of them being down towards the well, find a lift in those ankles as best as you can. We're finding ankle stability here. Now press out. This one's a little bit more challenging, pretty heavy on the legs. So if it's too much, you can always take it down, take a spring off. <sighs> Gliding in, press. Try to maintain that high heel the whole time. <sighs> this is our last variation here, finish strong. Eight, seven, Good, six, five, four, three, two, all the way out, hold it. We're gonna find a prance to do that. Drop one heel slowly down into the well, bend the opposite knee up towards the ceiling. You're gonna feel a deep stretch in the calf and then we're gonna switch. It feels really good. So really pause into it, take your time, and you're moving and switching with control. Again, not bouncing in that joint. So don't allow your knee to bounce when you switch. Stretch those calves. Some of the tightest muscles in our body, they can cause low back pain, all types of issues. So make sure you're giving those calves some love from time to time and switch. You might feel your ankles, little snap, crackle pops in there. I call them Rice Krispie ankles. It's just releases of pressure, as long as it's not associated with pain. Here for six, you can speed it up a little bit to more of a prance. Five, four, three, two, Last one, and slowly glide that carriage in. Good, so that was our footwork. Find a little rotation in the spine, drop your knees to one direction, gaze to the other, it's gonna feel really good. Just getting a stretch here. And switch, other direction. Good, now that we're done with footwork, we're gonna come back to center facing towards the ceiling. Bring those arches on again and scoot down away from those shoulder blocks just a little bit. Now we're gonna get into our bridging. So I like to start moving from the ground up. They say good health starts from the ground up. So if you're new to Pilates Reformer, these are really great exercises to start with. You can always come back to them. And even if you're not a beginner, still a great way to start out your, your warm up before your full exercise routine. So we're gonna start with those arches on again. Opening up that chest, here's our bridge series. We're gonna articulate from the spine first. So take a deep inhale. You're gonna feel like you're gonna tuck the pelvis. So you're pushing the, the pelvic muscles or bones up towards the ceiling and then pushing through that foot bar, not out. Just keeping the carriage in. Just roll up from that bridge, up towards the ceiling. Squeeze, tuck the tailbone, really tuck, squeeze the glutes. Melt it down. Carriage stays in the whole time. If you start to feel like you're pressing out, bring it right back in, reset, okay? And again, deep inhale, tuck the pelvis, scoop the abdominals, peel the spine, roll up. <sighs> Check in, open up that chin. So if you're crunching in the neck, don't do it, open up. <sighs> Melt it down, articulating, really roll. Try to exaggerate that articulation within the spine, creating space. And at your own pace, rolling up and down. Good. This is really good at firing up the posterior chain also, those glutes, the calves, all the muscles in your back. Push the shoulder blades down as you roll up. Get a few more. Scoop round, peel, roll, 
Squeeze the glutes. Melt all the way back down into that carriage. Two more. And roll. Right back down. Last one, here we go. Roll up. Melt it back down. Good. All right, we can kick out. Little roll of those ankles. See, there's my snap crackle pop. <laughs> and we're gonna take the heels on next, okay? So heels on, smaller surface area, a little bit more challenging. If you start to get a hamstring cramp, don't go so high. Some people tend to do that here. So listen to your body always. Take that deep inhale. We're gonna roll up again, pause at the top. Meet me once you get there, no rush. Once you are there, squeeze the glutes and then drop the hips halfway down and then squeeze to lift again. So you're pushing through the heels. <sighs> nice and tight lift. <sighs> if you're starting to feel this in your low back, don't go so high, check in with the abdominals, stay strong there, okay? <sighs> Good, and tuck, squeeze. <sighs> this is our spinal stability now, flat back hinge. For seven, <sighs> six, Five, four, you're gonna really feel that in the glutes. Three, maybe some bit in the hamstrings. Two, last one, roll it down. Little stretch, whatever feels good. I like to get into a butterfly stretch sometimes. Shake it out, shake it out, and last set. We're going to bring the heels together now still on that foot bar, so it's in this frogger position almost. Um, so heels are together, toes apart, arms are down nice and long. Deep inhale again, drive through the heels, squeeze to lift. Allow the hips to open up, allow the knees to drop a little wider, okay? So you're really gonna stretch those hip flexors. Drop halfway down and squeeze, lift. <sighs> really getting into those glutes a little bit more here. And again, lift, drop, seven, push the pelvic bone up, six. We're gonna stay high in five. Last four, you got it, deep breaths, three, two. Stay lifted, butterfly the knees, so bring the knees together and open back up. You're still high in that bridge, don't let the hips drop just yet, almost done, six. In and out, five, four, good, three, two, last one, and roll it down. Nice job, little stretch. That was our bridge series. And now we are going to get into a spring change, so roll up. And we are gonna go on to one heavy spring, one medium spring. So I'm gonna take two of my springs off now. One heavy, one medium. Roll back down, we're getting into our ab series. And then we're gonna reach back for those straps. You can go long or short. If this is your first time doing this or you're still new, maybe start with the long first, feel it in your body. And then as you progress, you want more tension, go into the short. So reach the fingers long towards the ceiling. I'm nice and stacked. So wrists, wrists are stacked over shoulders, finding some tension on those ropes. Once I feel that, I'm gonna bring one leg into tabletop, then the other to meet. So from here, again, push the pelvic bone up towards the ceiling. That's gonna close up that little space between your spine and the carriage. This is called an imprinted spine. This is going to protect your low back and it's gonna put it more into that core. That's where we want it. Deep inhale here, get nice and long. I'm in my imprinted spine and high five that mat. <sighs> Lowering those arms. This is our hands and strap series or supine arms. There's a few names for it. <sighs> but now we're working those abs. <sighs> really push energy out and away from you. Try to stay long in those wrists like you're scraping your fingers along the ceiling and then all the way down to that mat. I am going to progress. I'm gonna add options for progressions. You don't have to take them, but from here, we're gonna chest lift up. I'm gonna high five that mat, chest lift up. 
lower back down. And again, high five and lift. Lower back down, here we go. Try to get the head, neck, and shoulders to roll up. Right into those abs. Last seven. Six. Five. Here for four. Last three. Two. And one. Relax, bring it down. Feet come to foot bar. Take a second. So um, you're working your arms also, especially because you're pushing the resistance with those arms. So it's kind of a two for one, but we're definitely getting into that core also, especially with that chest lift. Take a second here. We're gonna have another variation. So now I'm dropping my elbows down by my side. We're gonna get into those triceps with the abs a little bit. So squeezing those armpits really close, bring those legs back into tabletop, and from here, we're gonna high five that mat again, but then just the fingertips come up towards the ceiling, elbows are staying down. So now we're getting into the triceps. Press away, strong in those wrists again. If you feel like the wrists are breaking, you can always make a fist. It's gonna give you a better grip onto those straps. And then you can add that chest lift. I'm gonna add the legs also. So I'm gonna kick one leg out towards the foot bar, chest lift up, tricep press. Again, this is another progression and switch. Here for eight, seven, Six, nice and long with those legs. Five, good. Four, three, deep breath, last two, and one. Bring it in, good, hang it up. So there's a lot of variations we can do with that. That's just the first two really good to start with as you're getting used to supine arms on the reformer. And again, we're gonna lift on up. And one more spring change for the entire workout. So I'm gonna go onto one medium spring now. I'm gonna flip around into what I call a Z sit. So I'm gonna be facing uh, sideways and my shin is parallel to my shoulder blocks and then my other shin is up onto my carriage. So the one, the feet I'm starting with is my right shin is against my shoulder blocks, my left shin is up onto my carriage. Kind of creating that Z-like form. We're gonna get into our mermaid stretch now. Really good for the spine. So palm is onto that foot bar. Other palm reaches long towards the ceiling and then you're gonna press out Reach long towards that foot bar. <sighs> Drop the head. You're getting a beautiful stretch in that spine, that lateral flexion. And restack. <sighs> and again, reach long, press out. <sighs> right back up. <sighs> and press, staying wide in that chest. <sighs> Good, this one always feels so nice. And restack. So that shoulder with the arm that's on the foot bar is really stabilizing here. <sighs> Try to keep the shoulder away from the ear for five, <sighs> four. Good, deep breath. Smile, feels so good. Three. <sighs> Reaching long every time. Two, and naturally close my eyes so I can really feel the stretch. Last one, and restack, bring it in. Little roll out from those shoulders. Nice and warmed up, we're gonna grab that strap in front of us, we can go onto that long loop. Again, if you feel like you want more tension, go onto short. 
but we're gonna open up. So now we did lateral flexion. We're gonna find a rotation of the spine. So the goal is to move the spine in all directions during every Pilates reformer workout. We're gonna do our hug a tree. So open up from the shoulder girdle, almost like you're giving a big hug. Round out in the arms. Open back up. So you can call it a bear hug. Hug a beach ball. <laughs> so many terms. <sighs> Micro bend in the elbows. So check in. <sighs> Anytime you want it heavier, you can go onto that short strap. <sighs> We're going to add a rotation in seven, six. Five, good, nice with control. Four, three, here for two. We're gonna hold it soon. Hold it here, last one. Rotate towards your foot bar from the spine. Restack, good. Try to get the hands in front of the chest the whole time. That's more of a rotation from the spine, less from the upper body. Six. Five, four, three, two, and one. Nice job. Hang that up. We got our rotation in. Roll it out. And we're going to get into our chest expansion now. So I'm doing an around, around the world flow, it's called. So I'm going to go around the world and make my way back to facing my foot bar. I'm going to scoot on up. My legs are long into my headrest. We're going to stay seated. And I'm going to reach up for both of my straps now. I'm facing my risers. Choke on up as far as you would like to go. So the further you choke up on your straps, the heavier that spring gets. So do what works for you. You can cross the ankles or not, whatever's comfortable. But we're gonna stay, get nice and tall in that spine. My knuckles are towards my floor, my palms are in. This is chest expansion. Deep inhale to prep, pull those straps behind you, shine the chest, squeeze the shoulder blades. And release. And pull. Nice and tall, draw the navel in, scoop those abdominals out. And my arms are staying super long. Quick benefits of chest expansion is we do a lot of forward flexion in our lives, whether you're sitting at a desk, driving a car, eating, texting, computer work. There's a lot of rounding of the shoulders in today's society. So chest expansion will open up that chest, improve your posture, and all around make you feel better, taller. If you haven't checked out my improve your posture video yet, make sure you do. It's really great for just opening up that chest, especially after a long work day. Here we go, last six. Five. Four. Three. Good, nice and slow. Two, squeeze every time. And one, roll it out. Doesn't take much. You're gonna feel everything start to fire up. Okay, staying in this position, we're gonna get into our tricep extension now. So bend the elbows in towards the side, really squeeze your armpits, keep the elbows close. My palms are still in towards each other. Get tall once again, and then just drop the chest a little bit. So make sure those shoulders don't collapse with you. Pull them back once more, drop the chest, and then we're gonna punch away behind us. Just bending from that elbow again, and punch away, extend. So you're going to feel those triceps start to work. And punch here for seven, six, good, five, deep breath, keep going, four, three, here for two, and one, good, restack, roll it out. Whew.
little arm burn. Okay, I'm gonna go down to my short straps now. If at any time you're feeling a pinch in your low back or you're dumping, you can always tuck that pelvis and put yourself into a C curve, we call it. So start off tall, tuck the pelvis, C curve. So I'm gonna get into that position here. Palms are gonna come up towards the ceiling and we're gonna get into our bicep curl. So when you're ready, bicep curl, fingers towards the face and release. If it's not heavy enough and you're on those short straps, reach back, load up your medium spring. So add it to the back hook or a button if you have one on your reformer. If not, take it off, throw a heavy on. Deep breath, bicep curl. Try to keep those fingers long again and elbows a little higher. Eight, seven, Six, five, four, good, we're gonna hold it in three, make it a little spicy for you, two, hold that bicep curl, little pulses, up an inch, down an inch, don't release that bicep just yet, seven, six, little burnout here, five, four, three, two, and one, release, roll up, find a forward fold, stretch that spine, and hang up those straps. So now we're gonna flip around to the other side, we're gonna do mermaid stretching in that rotation. So my back will be to you for a bit, but I'll still be cueing you. So now my left shin is against my shoulder block, back into that Z set. Right palm is on the foot bar, other arm is long. Press out, reach mermaid stretch, other direction. <sighs> Restack. This is where you'll get to feel what side of the body is, is, is maybe tighter than the other. Maybe you have less range of motion. One of your shoulders feels locked up or tight. We all have one. <sighs> Just go slow and breathe deep so you can send oxygen through those muscles, they'll help to relax. Reach long, stretch that spine. Restack. Here for four. Three. Two. Really drop that head. And one. Whew, I felt my shoulder release. Perfect. Come back up, restack, roll it out. Okay, now we're gonna reach for that long strap again and get back into our hug a tree or bear hug and round out in those arms, open back up. Try to match whatever you did on the other side. So if you used a short strap, try to go short strap, long, stay long. <sighs> Unless you absolutely need to change it, but trying to stay even here. <sighs> and hug. Seven. <sighs> Six, make sure those elbows are bent. Five. Four, we have that rotation coming soon. And three, two, hug and hold, rotate towards that foot bar. And restack. So again, you'll start to feel what side of your spine is a little bit tighter. Maybe you have less range of motion, less rotation on one side than the other. That's why we do this. Six, these are really great exercises to start with. Five, four, or if you just want an easier flow, three on the body, two, last one, restack, hang it up. Okay, we got 
a lot into that upper body and spine. I'm gonna flip around to face my foot bar. Now we're gonna get into those glutes. So I have my ball close by because I like to use it as my headrest. You can always use the headrest on your reformer as your headrest or if you wanna grab a towel if you don't have a ball. But I like a little bit more neck support. So I'm gonna come side lying now, facing you all to start. And I'm staying on that medium spring still, grabbing that long loop in front of me. My knees are stacked and my hips are stacked. So really bend the knees. If you have enough space behind you, you can scoot back a little bit. And I'm gonna push off my reformer, taking that long loop, put it in the top of my foot. So for me, it's my left foot to start. Stacking my knees again, get long in that neck. So just get comfortable on your, on your carriage. My top hand is on my hip. When I'm ready, I'm gonna open up that top hip just a little bit so I'm in that good alignment, knee to hip. Flex my foot and I'm gonna stamp away. <sighs> Bend it right back in and stamp, leading with my heel. So we're getting into those glutes now. I like to think that I'm kicking towards the very edge of my foot bar and that kind of gives me a good range of where to keep my leg, especially when I'm pressing out and I'm aiming for something so I don't allow that leg to like drift behind me or in front too much. I know where my control needs to be. And if you feel like this isn't heavy enough or you want it a little tighter, then you can put that short strap on the foot or just change out your spring again, load up that half spring, whatever you wanna do. <sighs> Check in with those abdominals though, draw them in from the front, we're staying engaged the whole time. So even though we're lying down, make sure you're still working. Here for seven, <sighs> deep breath, six, you might really start to feel that glute fire up now, five, <sighs> four, Three, two, last one. Keep it out. I'm gonna sweep that leg nice and long. So I don't think I mentioned, this is called single leg and strap series. It's one of my favorites to work in those glutes. So I'm just sweeping my leg long in front and sweeping it back. Not so much that your rope hits your face, so again, in control of what's happening with that movement. <sighs> nice and tight though in that glute. Seven. <sighs> Six, keep that leg in line with your hip the whole time. Five, <sighs> Whew, it's really working here. Four, especially if you go slow. Three. Here for two, and one, good. Let's take a break, bend that knee in, give it a little punch out if it's burning, it always helps. <clears throat> okay, we have a couple more variations. So I'm gonna open up that top hip again, anchor the toes up towards the ceiling. So slight external rotation, and now we're gonna stamp and kick that foot away again. This is your single leg frogger. I love these ones too. I love all of them. <laughs> and stamp, kick, squeeze. Anytime you need to take breaks, take them. Seven. Six. Five, good, deep breath, you got this. Four. Three, two, and one. Whew. Bring it in. Take that strap. Don't ditch it just yet. Just glide it, slide it up above the knee now. Okay, this is our last variation. We got this. These are our clamshells. So heels are together, toes are apart. That strap is right above the knee. And we're going to just open up the hip and close. This is our glute burnout here. You'll know why in about a few reps. <sighs> Good, try to keep those toes separated and then close them up with the knee. Seven, six, five, four, three, 
two, and one. Nice job. Take it off, bring it back in, and hang up your strap. Sit on up for about half a second. Give yourself a figure four stretch, so just cross that leg over the other, lean into it. It's gonna give that glute a nice stretch, feels really good. And before we go to the other side, always a transition exercise. So ditch your ball just for a bit. Now we're gonna get into that chest, face that foot bar. I'm gonna put my legs in crisscross, but you can always extend them long in front of you, so whatever feels good. Reach back for both of those straps again. I'm gonna go onto my short straps, make it a little heavier here. And we're gonna get tall. So drop the arms down by your side, palms are forward towards your foot bar, and we're gonna reach long with those arms. This is called serve your tray, or an offering, a full offering, so. You can see why, it's almost like you're serving something out to somebody. Reaching long in those arms again. Deep breaths. Seven. Six. Five. Here for four. Three. Two. Last one, bring it in, little roll out. We're gonna bring those arms into a 90 degree position. We're getting to those shoulders just a little bit. And again, with that hinge. So just drop the chest slightly, overhead reach long, bend those elbows to bring it in, back to that goal post position. And press, <sighs> drop. <sighs> you can speed it up a little bit, just make sure you're in control. Eight, squeeze the shoulder blades back. Seven, six, five, four, feeling those shoulders work. Three, two, and one. Drop, bring it in, nice little stretch. Hang up those straps and find your ball. Back into that other side, almost finished here. So, come side lying again, facing the other direction. Ball, towel, headrest, whatever you're using. Bend both of those knees, get nice and stacked again. Reach long for that strap in front of you. Push off, now it's in my right foot, right into that arch. And once again, top hand on that hip, open up and we're gonna stamp and kick away. Leading for that edge of the foot bar again. Good, here we go for seven. Six, really squeeze that glute. Five. Four. Three, we have those leg sweeps coming in two. All the way out, hold it, sweep that leg forward and pull it back. And sweep long. Pull it back, really tight, first seven, good, six, abdominals are engaged, check in, five, here for four, three, Two, good, and one. Bring it in, <laughs> give it a punch, whatever feels good. And we're gonna get into that single leg frogger again. So opening up the hip one more time, toes are anchored towards that ceiling, so slight external rotation, and stamp, stamp away. 
draw it right back in. Push through that heel. Your glute should be really fired up by now. Seven. Six. Here for five. Good. Four. Nice deep breaths. You got it. Last three. It really sneaks up to you sometimes. <laughs> Two. And one. Bend that top knee. Just glide that strap above. We have that clamshell on the other side. So connect the heels together. Toes are apart. When you're ready, close up the knee and open that hip. And close. Last seven, little burnout. Six, five, four, three, two, and one. Nice job. Take that strap out. Glide yourself back in. Sit up. Toss that ball, towel, whatever you used. Give yourself that figure four stretch on the other side again. And for our favorite, we're gonna get into feet and straps. You can't end a Pilates performer workout without some feet and straps. So load that one single heavy spring back on. So I'm gonna be on one heavy, one medium. This is pure magic. Lie on down. Head into that headrest again. Reach back for one of your straps, doesn't matter which one. I'm gonna kick off with one of my legs, so opposite, opposite, and then strap up my foot. Get nice and tight, so find some tension on the rope. Reach for the other strap. Once you're nice and tight with that strapped foot, bring the other foot to meet, strap that one up also. Kick those legs up towards the ceiling and really anchor the tailbone down. So if you're lifted up here, push through the legs, Settle the glutes into the carriage, and now you're ready for feet and straps. So lower those legs, and sweep up. Gives your legs a nice deep stretch while lubricating out the hips, working the abs a little bit, some pelvic stability, and it just feels really nice to end any Pilates reformer workout with. Sweep up towards that ceiling and open up. So we're opening, circumducting the legs out, down, and around. Big leg circles here. So however big or small is totally up to you. I like to make them a little bigger. It really feels like I'm opening up my hips and lubricating them out. They can get a little sticky sometimes, so. and try to move them together. Identify if one leg wants to move faster than the other. Don't let it, that's your dominant side taking over. We all have one, so stay mindful. One more in this direction. Sweep up, and then we're gonna lower and switch other way. So I'm gonna lower down first, then open, circumduct out and around. Connect at the top, and lower. And my arms are just hanging out down by my side. Try to let go of any tension you might be holding in your neck or in your shoulders. This is just meant to feel good. Good. One more. Reach up for that ceiling again. Grab your straps, one last one, bend the knees, bring the soles of the feet together. So you really have to open up the hips to allow that to happen. Soles of the feet come together like they're super glued. Drop the legs and feet down towards your springs. Now you're in this nice hip opener and this is where you just take a deep breath and relax. So really try to let go of any tension. We hold a lot of tension in our hips so just take a few minutes here. 
Relax however long you would like. <sighs> Breathe it out. <sighs> Little stretch if you like to pull on those straps. Usually I'll spend about one to two minutes in that exercise. Just thanking myself for all the hard work I put in. And when you're ready, we'll roll on up. And that was it. So if you are new to Pilates Reformer, great exercises to do. You can do them as often as you would like. And when you're ready and if you'd like, check out my next video and I'll see you soon.